is intended mainly for person working in the area of intellectual property rights in uh, research organization, educational organization, or in industry. This course is designed to provide participants with a deeper understanding of IPR and the techniques required for smooth utilization of IPR system. It contains practicals along with lectures, examples, and exercises to provide skill, encourage participation, and exchange information. I welcome all the senior officers from ICR, head of the divisions, invited resource person, all participants coming from diverse background and region across India. Dr. Rita Sharmaji, uh, Madam, will enlighten us on the importance of innovation, technology transfer, and the successful adoption, uh, adoption of research results for the benefit of society. Now I request JDR, sir, to welcome Madam. These plants, uh, plants has been developed by Dr. Jayanti in I in our uh, tissue culture facility here. <laughs> and now I wish to take this opportunity to welcome Mr. R.S. Samuel, Joint Development Commissioner, Ministry of MSME, and he is IRI alumni. He did his master's in plant physiology from IRI. <laughs> Friends, I welcome Dr. K.V. Prabhu, sir, our Joint Director Research, who is always with us in each and every activity as a guiding force. Sir has provided us not only guidance, but moral support and logistic supports whenever we needed him. We were bothering him in the night also. Now I invite uh, Dr. K.V. Prabhu for his opening remarks. Thank you, Neeru. Uh, Madam Dr. Rita Sharma, uh, Mr. Samuel, Dr. J.P. Sharma, uh, Neeru, and my friends here, ADG, Dr. Maurya, uh, Dr. Ashok, Sanjeev, Dr. Kocher, and all my fellow friends here. IPR uh, working in public domain uh, seemed something unconnected till Madam Rita Sharma came up uh, with uh, unique committee uh, which was branding ICR. I don't know whether you remember that or not, Madam. She was chairperson of the first committee before she uh, became the ch chairperson of this guideline development, where the value of branding a product to an institution, public or private, whatever, uh, came up uh, on the screen, uh, which we had never thought or uh, envisaged as something that we would have to have in our system too. Madam, when we uh, developed several products, varieties for that matter, which actually trades more than uh, something like 200,000 crores business in the country, unrecognized, disorganized, I'm not saying unorganized, it's disorganized, very abrupt uh, in its way of doing things, ad hoc in its management. There is nothing like a stable system that worked on it, but nevertheless, money flowed in and uh, money did get accrued and the people did make money out of it. But when we got people to look at our technologies, uh, the varieties, for example, uh, we would be very happy if somebody offered to take it with him and then produce it and sell it or whatever. We would feel very happy. It never occurred to us uh, that uh, when he would do it, uh, of course, he would make money that we would know. Uh, when he would make money, uh, he would actually not build a brand value to it because he or she would not necessarily take care of the quality, which is what we never attempted to think of. And the variety would normally, unless the farmer himself decided that this is something that has come to him as a gift and uh, he is really getting uh, turned on because of uh, its ability to give him more money, uh, more returns uh, for the investment he makes, uh, the variety would die a natural death, a uh, unnatural death, because of the wrong management of the technology. It never occurred to us that that could be managed well. Uh, with your arrival on the scene in the ICR as finance advisor and subsequent uh, dealings with uh, how to manage the technologies and IPR regime in general getting activated with WTO and uh, uh, all such kind of things somehow triggered us on. Uh, and then uh, we also realized that it is not enough to uh, protect our technology. Uh, it is not enough to say that we want to commercialize. It's also required to see that it is managed properly to the value it commands in the system, in terms of the product value and in terms of the value it gives to the institution which has produced it and the people who invented it. 
I'd like to begin by saying how delighted I am to be here on this occasion. Uh, and I'm also very happy to see that this is a partnership effort. I think partnerships is now going to become a very important central core theme in all business that we do, not only in agriculture, but since we are here today in the context of agriculture, the more partnerships that we have, the more networks that we will have, the more enriching will be the content of whatever it is that we are doing. I'm especially happy because, as Mr. Samuel mentioned, he's very happy he's come back to his alma mater. And I'm happy because I've been associated very closely with the subject of what we are going to be discussing, talking about, learning in the next three weeks on uh, intellectual property rights in agriculture. We must recognize that no guideline is a static document. Guidelines by their very nature, by their very definition, must be dynamic documents. And it's now coming right time, 10 years of experience, water flown down the bridge in terms of the experience gained all over the country in all of the institutions, in terms of what is working, what needs to be modified, what needs to be refined. So from that point of view, I see that in the future and probably in the year 2016 when it will be exactly 10 years since our guidelines have been in effect, we need to look at them again to modify them and to strengthen them and to make them more responsive to the feedbacks that we are getting from the group of people who are using these guidelines. Now, I was looking at the list of very eminent speakers who are going to be with you over the next uh, three weeks all experts in their own fields, whether from the legal uh, perspective or from the technical uh, dimensions, other sister organizations like the CSIR. I remember we consulted them very closely when we were developing our own guidelines to share with you their own experiences and to um, jointly sort of look at what can be the learning dimension and the awareness creation dimension of this exercise.